Bats are some of the most fascinating animals alive today. As one of the few vertebrate lineages to achieve true powered flight, learning about these mammals is always rewarding, and the evolutionary history of the bat order is a captivating journey. There are many amazing extinct bat species that we know of, but the one we're looking at today is a particularly remarkable taxon. Desmodus draculae was the largest vampire bat that's known to have ever existed, living until very recently throughout the Americas, and likely having fed on the blood of megafauna such as giant sloths. Desmodus draculae was first encountered back in 1965, when fossil remains belonging to the bat were discovered in a cave in Venezuela, though it wasn't until 1988 that the fossils were officially described as a new species. These remains included an almost complete skull and mandible, in addition to parts of the arm bones and three vertebrae, though other specimens have since been found which preserve more of the skeleton. The paleontologists decided to very aptly name this new species, the largest vampire bat known, after Count Dracula himself, creating the specific name Draculae. The bat was also found to actually belong to an already known genus, Desmodus, the same as the still living common vampire bat Desmodus rotundus. Several other extinct species in this genus have also been named, however Desmodus draculae is still the largest. Since the initial discovery of this bat in Venezuela, both fossils and subfossils have been found throughout the Americas, from as far south as Argentina all the way to Mexico, and ranging from the late Pleistocene to as recently as possibly just 300 years ago. So how big was Desmodus draculae? Well, it was still a vampire bat, so it's not exactly reaching future predator dimensions, but it was huge for a desmodontine. Looking at the size of its skull, it's likely that this species was capable of achieving a wingspan of around 50 centimeters, and probably a mass of 60 grams. This might not sound all that impressive, but that puts Desmodus draculae in the same realm as the largest of horseshoe bats and even small fruit bats while most of its relatives are more in the range of 10 to 20 grams, so this was truly a monster among microbats. As I just mentioned, the giant vampire bat had a pretty massive geographic range stretching across the Americas, based on the various different caves its remains have been found in, and the time at which it lived would also have made it coeval with some interesting extinct megafauna. It's reasonable to assume that Desmodus draculae was probably feeding mostly on mammals, this is due to the fact that although the white-winged and hairy-legged vampire bats primarily consume the blood of birds, the common vampire targets mammals, and since the giant vampire is most closely related to the common vampire, we can assume it did too. That's not to say that it wouldn't also have occasionally fed on birds though, given the chance. The larger size of Desmodus draculae compared to the living vampires may also be an indication of an adaptation to feeding on larger prey, including, perhaps, megafauna such as the giant ground sloths that inhabited the Americas at this time. Interestingly, a fossil of a common vampire bat was actually discovered sticking to the underside of a coprolite, fossil faeces, attributed to the ground sloth Nothrotherium. So, if its close relatives were likely feeding on such animals, it's very possible that their large size made them especially capable of doing so too. In fact, a skull from the giant vampire has been found associated with a skull from an extinct South American horse, suggesting that maybe these animals were another of their target prey. A potential food source proposed by some other researchers is also the diverse caviomorph rodents that lived throughout the bat's range during this time. The discovery of remains from these bats in Argentina, published in 2000, uncovered something very interesting. The specimen, a complete left upper canine, was found in a location about 600 kilometers further south than the current range for the Desmodus genus. The limit of the living bats range is the July minimal isotherm of 10 degrees Celsius in the southern hemisphere, meaning they struggle to live further south because it's too cold for them. However, the place at which the giant vampire bat tooth was found is presently in the July isotherm of 8 degrees Celsius, meaning it's likely that for the bats to have existed here, this region was at least 2 degrees Celsius higher than the current July isotherm. Even more amazingly though, is the fact that the tooth has actually been dated to just 300 years ago. So not only is there some interesting potential climate data, but it also means that we barely missed these animals, and it's even possible that some may still survive today. Researchers have pointed out that reports from local inhabitants of particularly large bats feeding on cattle and horses might, conceivably, be attributed to some surviving population of Desmodus draculae. However, the researchers also note that the cave systems nearby to where these reports originate from had been intensively studied, and no such giant vampire bats were found. 
Instead, a lot of reports of giant bats can probably be attributed to witnesses over-exaggerating the size of extant vampire bats. Still, it's fun to think that such animals could still be around, and it's especially plausible given the very recent dates of their remains. The reason for this bat's probable extinction is not currently known for certain, but suggestions have been made that it may be due to the extinction of their favoured prey. As they seem to have been particularly suited to feeding on the blood of megafauna, some researchers have proposed that the disappearance of those animals could have had a hand in the bat's extinction, as they were unable to adapt to feeding on smaller prey. Although, the discoveries of Desmodus draculae surviving until so recently would seem to cause a problem for this idea. The giant vampire bat may also have had a significant impact on human culture, too, with researchers also noting that mythology and stories from around Mexico and Central America sometimes include large bats. A particularly remarkable example is that of Camazotz, a bat god in Maya mythology. Camazotz is quite possibly based on animals such as the common vampire bat instead, but larger species such as Desmodus draculae, if encountered by humans, might have been part of the inspiration. So the giant vampire bat was an extraordinary animal. This giant among its relatives would have been an impressive sight to behold, and its possible, though highly unlikely, continued survival will grant an air of mysterious appeal to this beast. Hopefully this video has been able to show you how cool bats are. We really should make more content about these remarkable animals at some point. Speaking of things that fly, I'd also like to recommend that you head on over to our partner channel Doug A. James, where Doug has just uploaded his documentary about the Spitfire. He's put an enormous amount of effort into this project, and it's taken a long time to be produced, so we're both very excited for you all to see it. The documentary is all about the journey of the plane, from its beginnings to its major successes and failures, and the impact it had on the war. We really hope you enjoy it. Anyway, a big thank you to our patrons, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Jan Owen, Corey Peterson, George Vojtek, Persian Boy, Mike Pace, Mayer's World, Dhruv Srivastava, Jacob Stewart, Matthias Bergscher, Nicole Bueno, Pasta, Amanda von Nordek, Mark Fawn, Dominic Bathy, Harry Evert, and Alex Hawke. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.